Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another fun episode. If you happen to be new here, please do us a big, big favor and hit follow or subscribe where you listen or watch the podcast. To the people tuning in today, if you're a big Mortal Kombat gamer, today's a day to rejoice. We have the privilege of speaking with the fabulously talented Mara Juno. Mara took on the role of Queen Sindel in MK11. There's a lot of passionate people when it comes to this character, and so therefore we are definitely grateful to have this episode underway today. In addition, Mara is an outright legend when it comes to voiceover work. She has played substantial characters in some of the biggest IPs worldwide. Excluding Mortal Kombat, she has been involved with some other worthy names such as Fallout, Final Fantasy, Destiny, Call of Duty, Far Cry, and so much more. With all this said and done, let's now switch over to the interview, my friends. And here we are, combatants, joined by the ever so lovely Mara Juno, the voice of our much beloved Scream Queen, Sin Del. It's an absolute honor to have you here today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> to kick off today's interview, before we get into all the juicy details of our scream cream, bleh, oh my God. I'm having a kind of <laughs> with you. Trust me. I'm right it's there with both, you. It's both a rough morning for us, Mara. Right? Right? We got to get back in the swing of things. Um, <laughs> before we get into the details of Queen Sintel, why don't you fill in our audiences briefly on what exactly had motivated you to get into voice acting in the first place? Oh my goodness, that's a great question. Um, you know, I acting was something that I always wanted to do, you know, since I was a little kid. Um, but then as I started to get older, I mean, I'm pretty introverted and private, and so the idea of kind of the way the world is now where, you know, everybody's got a cell phone, everybody can be a paparazzi. It's so invasive. You know what I mean? I was like, I don't know if I kind of want to be front and center that way. So I kind of gave up on the acting dream for a long time because I kind of just figured mm. it wasn't feasible because I would just would hear fans say things like, you know, oh, well, you decided to have a public career. You know, we own you. And it's just kind of like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> kind of messed up. So, uh, yeah, so voice acting really didn't occur to me until um, I spent about almost eight years uh, in radio and I was a country music DJ and I was a uh, classic rock uh, morning show co-host. And uh, then I also did um, my afternoon drive. I would do adult contemporary. And so I was talking all wow. day long. And I thought that was the coolest job in the world at the time. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> you're paying me money to listen to music and talk. Okay, cool. Um, but that got old after a while, you know, and I kind of gotten as far as I was going to get in radio. And so um, when I walked away, I was kind of trying to figure out, like, how, what am I going to do? Like, that could even remotely compare to the job I just had using my voice. Sure. Um, and so then all of a sudden, you know, it kind of occurred to me voice acting and I started pursuing that online, believe it or not. I started looking at ah. websites, um, like pay to play websites where you could pay to audition and set up a profile and just get connected with clients and get your feet wet and stuff like that. But that's kind of sure. how I got started. It's yeah. <laughs> wow. Very good. Um, your website describes you as uh, wielding a versatile three-dimensional shapeshifter sound, which is a perfect fit uh, for a character <laughs> as powerful as Sindel. Were you given any kind of direction as to what Sindel should sound like, or were you given some freedom in this respect? I have to say, I, Netherrealm was awesome in giving me a lot of freedom. I mean, of course, I wanted to... I mean, I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan, and... I definitely wanted to honor the fans and and not go, you know, so left field that, you know, people wouldn't completely recognize this person. Um, but at the same time, you know, we wanted to do something a little fresh and they really didn't give me any big restrictions on, you know, what I okay. could or couldn't do. And so I tried to, you know, honor uh, the essence and the previous spirit um, from the amazing actresses who have, you know, voiced her before. And then yeah, kind of also do my own thing a little bit. Brilliant. 
Were you by chance a fan of Mortal Kombat originally before mm -hmm. taking on the role of Sindel? Uh, did you commonly play the games or watch any of the movies, TV series? I did. I I was such a fan. I don't know. Are you familiar? With, remember the OG soundtrack, like the 1980s? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I played that on a loop. Okay. Like that was like my jam. Like I work That's out amazing. for Mortal Kombat theme song. It's stupid. So yeah, I was a little <laughs> stupid bit of fun. Yeah. I've calmed down considerably since then, but yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Uh, so the techno syndrome theme. Yeah. Wait, sorry, did you did you say you actually like listened to like the movies, uh, uh -huh. EDM soundtrack? Yeah. Okay. So the whole yeah, nine the yards. Immortals, techno syndrome. I've, yeah. Yes. It was, yes. That's, that's, <laughs> my, that's my jam. <laughs> that's amazing. So you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Respect points. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so what did you think of, uh, of, say, the movies or TV series, if you happened to tune in? Uh, did you happen to see uh, Musetta Vander's re representation of Sindel? Did you enjoy that? The Is that the new one that, that's just come out? No, that was the 97 Annihilation. Yeah, she oh, played you Sindel. will die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're killing me, Mara. You're killing me. Yes, that I'm is the one. On Working on it. No, she was awesome. I mean that. I mean that scene alone is epic. That's like <laughs> in the history. Of it, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. No, it's awesome. Oh, that's very cool. So, are there any <laughs> practices or techniques that you employ to get your voice primed and ready before a performance? Um, furthermore, what advice would you give to say a couple of novice podcast hosts? <laughs> oh my goodness. In terms of like using your voice or. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say when I first started in this business, I mean, I was just, I did everything wrong. Like you, you name what you should do for vocal health. And I was doing the opposite, like screaming at the top uh -huh. of my lungs, football games, you know, all night karaoke's, not drinking enough water. Just awful, awful, awful. Oh, man. So I've learned some lessons since then. I mean, I even wound up uh, in a situation where I had a vocal nodule briefly um, because I oh. just didn't. Yeah. So I, that can be career ending if you're not careful. Luckily, this one was mild, didn't require surgery or anything like that. But it was, you know, kind of a wake up call. So um, I kind of learned the value of warming up. It really does make a difference, guys. I know everybody just wants to jump in there and jump on the mic, but I'm telling you, if you're gonna be talking for extensive periods of time, hydrate and preferably hydrate like at least 24 hours before because it takes a minute before your body kind of absorbs everything and warm up. Like it really does. I mean, it's, it's muscles and it's our instrument. And yeah, so I have learned the power of warming up. I don't, I'm not a saint about it, but I try to do a, at minimum, even if it's just a few minutes on, uh, have you ever seen like these vocal straws um, it's basically just a bunch of sets of tiny little thin straws that you kind of hum into and it helps to increase your range. That's interesting. No, I didn't know about that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's all the rage right now. They say it's actually better than traditional warmups and those you can do in literally like three minutes. So I try to wow. do something like that at minimum before I get up and at them for the day, but I'm not always perfect, but I highly recommend in your car on the way to the studio, whatever you got to do. <laughs> I hear the pipes. <laughs> noted, noted. Wow, intriguing. Um, aside from doing all the main dialogue for Sindel, did you also take part in uh, the the famous Banshee scream for the character? I did. I did. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us that experience. What that was like, and oh how much that God. killed your vocal cords. <laughs> you know, it, it actually did. It wasn't too bad. I mean, and we kind of experimented with different forms of the scream, but um, yeah. I mean, that was honestly. I think that was what made me the most nervous about taking this role on because her scream is so iconic in every different iteration, and. Yeah. You know, and again, where I'm trying to do my own thing and not just be whatever. So I I can do kind of a banshee sort of thing, you know, and I used to play around and do that sort of thing around the house. And so I was like, let me see. I mean, she seems very banshee-esque in my interpretation of her. I don't know if that's officially what she is, but she definitely has right. that vibe. So I definitely incorporated, incorporated some banshee-esque sort of elements to her when uh, it came down to doing some screams. Wow. 
So, what? yeah. I, I experimented first with, um, how did I, I think the first go round, and I think when I listen to the scream, I feel like I can hear a hybrid of the things that I did, but I'm not exactly sure. But like when I first <laughs> experimented, at least, let's see if I can do it. I don't want to jinx myself. Okay. Um, it was more like an inhale, sort of like, <laughs> you know, wow, which yeah. is a little harder to sustain and probably not as vocally healthy. Um, and then, so I think we incorporated more of, okay, I don't want to blow my gut. <laughs> you know, whoa, I really yeah. like that one. That whoa. feels more like it. Right. So I think that's, that's incredible. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that's just some freak of nature thing that I've been doing when I was a kid and who knew it would come in handy one day. Yeah. <laughs> What would you say are some of your favorite qualities or characteristics of Sindel? I'm aware that, yeah, you've stated you actually like her sassy sort of attitude. Has it helped alleviate any bottled up frustration? <laughs> <laughs> it's so cathartic, I'm telling you, man. She's Sindel, it's amazing. No, she's badass. I mean, I know, you know, some people have... have you know, been maybe not as thrilled with the latest retcon and, 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 you know, kind of wish that, you know, she was presenting herself in a more nurturing way. But it's like, this is another side of Sindel that I think has been awesome to explore. And, you know, of course, these are all different, you know, iterations, you know, we, who knows what's going to happen next. But I yeah. think in this iteration, it was really fun to explore that sort of darker queen side of her. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I think, I I don't know. I think, I mean, just look at her. She was made for that as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with with sweet mommy Sindel. But at the same time, I mean, we've all got some bad days. <laughs> so she had Fair enough. Right? <laughs> So I understand that uh, you're a massive fan of the wonderful Jennifer Hale, who played um, Kronika, as well as some legendary characters like Commander Shepard and the Mass Effect fame. Yeah. Tell us how you reacted when you <laughs> had witnessed that uh, you were actually in a scene with her. Were you satisfied with how it all played out? I'm, oh my, the tears, like, let me see if I could reenact this. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, it was unreal. It was just absolutely unreal. Yeah, I have been a fan of Jennifer's. My God, she is she is the queen of embodying amazing characters. And so, yeah, to yes. be in even remotely in the same universe with her was just such an honor, you know, and just wow. mind blowing, indescribable. That's all I get to indescribable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you, do you still particularly remember that scene? Did you enjoy how it all played out in the end and whatnot? I do. I mean, I, I, I did enjoy that scene. I thought that it was done very well. And and I was just proud that I kind of held my own in a scene with her. <laughs> <laughs> Kept it together. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? So that yeah. was surreal in itself. But wow. what are your, what do you feel about it? You know, I thought it was great. And, uh, you know, like... Like a lot of the community, I was kind of like admittedly hesitant. Like, I know it's a little bit of a different scene, but like the whole like Sindel retcon and whatnot, right? Yeah. Because a lot of us were so used to, a, you know, a certain Sindel. And exactly. it's kind of like, what? But, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And right. um, no, I thought you did great. I thought you did great, Mara. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, during your time working on this character, did you ever add in a bit of your own spin to any of the lines uh, whatsoever? Perhaps a smidge of improv, uh, something you've personally suggested to the team that uh, wound up sticking in the final product? Uh, you know, I, I can't think of anything specifically, but absolutely, we collaborated constantly in terms of, you know, maybe this should have a little more kind of wicked nuance, or maybe this should be a little more tucked back, or, you know, um, and just really kind of examining how Sindel felt personally about every character that she was interacting with and making sure that those nuances, you know, really stood out. So, yeah, I it was very collaborative. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so, speaking of uh, Sindel's uh, retcon or whatnot, um, were you 
before accepting the role, uh, were you familiar with any of Sindel's background? And uh, what was your personal opinion on the drastic change in the lore? Um, I I used to play uh, older iterations of of Sindel. Absolutely. Um, I wasn't as familiar with her actual lore, though. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, okay. but I absolutely, you know, once I got involved with the role, I mean, I went nuts in terms of doing my homework, but. Um, yeah, I, I can understand for those who were really deeply attached to that original lore, feeling like this sort of, you know, universe of this happening with, with this, com feeling like a completely different version of Sindel. Um, I just really feel like it's, it's just kind of a different expression. I don't even like to say like, it's a, you know, a retcon, you know what I mean? I just feel like. Sure. We go through, you know, let's assume that this timeline happened this way. Like, is it possible that sort of reaction could happen, you know? And I think that NetherRealm did a really killer job at exploring that. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, I, I had so much fun going in that direction. And I'm hoping that ultimately, you know, despite what people initially may ha have had their reservations about going in that direction that they ultimately had fun with the experience at the end because that was the goal i sure as heck did absolutely right. and yeah again i'm i'm really stoked to see uh where exactly sindel's direction is going to go from here mm -hmm. um uh, so with all this retcon stuff and you know people talking about it so heavily on social media um <laughs> Do you get tagged in a lot of posts? Do you ever interact with fans about this kind of thing? Uh, do you, do you oh, yeah. see all the hashtags? <laughs> I do. I do see the hashtags. And I will say, if you're on Twitter, be careful. <laughs> because a lot of them are not safe for work. But um... <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right, right. <laughs> no, I do try to interact with the fans as much as I can. I'm just, I, I'm just so grateful that the community has been so kind in welcoming me into this universe. I mean, first and foremost, because anytime you're taking on a role that has been previously established by another actress, you know, it's a big responsibility. You know, it's like you want to do due diligence to the character and, and just a character that's so beloved as, as Sindel is, you know what I mean? You really want to yeah. make sure that you honor the spirit of who the character is and that you give the fans something that they can feel and appreciate and, and love. And the outpouring of warmth and acceptance and and just praise that I've gotten from the community has just been absolutely mind blowing. Like I am I'm beyond grateful <laughs> more than Incredible. I can express with how wonderful the fans have been. Because, you know, as you know, the game industry can be toxic for a lot of people. Um, and so I'm just, I just, I can't say enough how awesome it's been. Yes. Yes. Um, just by small chance, uh, I'm going to assume you're highly active on social medias. Did you ever speak with Leo Montalonga who portrayed Sindel, the original Sindel? I did not. I did not speak okay. with Leah, but, um, yeah. And I'm, I'm moderately active on social media. I've been kind of moderately. Slack. But yeah, <laughs> only so much you can take, right? There's Before it's like, <sighs> exactly. <laughs> it's like yeah, maybe yeah. some fresh air would do me good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How long did it take to wrap up work for Sindel? What was the approximate duration of your time within the studio for Mortal Kombat 11? Oh, that is a good question. I mean, we worked um, over the course of, I want to say at least a couple of years, but, you know, mm. it just really depends on scheduling and when the teams and of, of writers and everybody are ready to line everything up and, you know, talent schedules line up. So I don't even remember approximately, you know, how many sessions, but yeah, it was over the course of a couple of years before the big reveal happened. That's usually kind of how it works, depending on, you know, the size of the game or, you know the narratives. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, if you've still got it in you and you're up to it, uh, <laughs> would you be open to saying one of Sindel's lines for the Mortal Kombat community today? Oh, okay. Do we have any special requests? I mean, I, I have some faves, but okay. Um, you know what? Perhaps one from the game, such as, uh, Shao Kahn and I will rule an eternal empire. Shao Kahn and I will rule an entire empire. <laughs> That's awesome. What are some of your favorites? Oh, let's see. Um, 
Of course, there's you will die, but that's not me. Um, no, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's see. Um, flattery, service, worship, or kneel and lick my boots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that one. That was fantastic. Yes. I said kneel. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my favorite. Yeah, when I saw that come together, I was like, no, yes, please. How how could it not, right? That's incredible. (laughs) Right, I mean, come on. That was the show. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think you've probably seen this question coming. Would you be very interested in returning as a character to explore her more in a future MK title? Uh, I mean, duh. (laughs) 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 Yesterday. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's awesome. We'd love to see you back. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I would love it if they have me. You voiced uh, games, commercials, and so forth. While I'm sure you enjoy them all for different reasons, do you happen to have a favorite amongst them? I would say uh, absolutely, at the end of the day, anything with character work. So. You know, okay. I would say video games and animation are my top favorite. And I'm probably even more so video games just because, um, I don't know, they kind of work different sets of muscles. Animation kind of works more comedic, improvisational muscles, which is great. But you also can use that just as equally uh, in video games. Um, but video games tend to oftentimes lean toward a little more toward, toward the dramatic, the theatrical Um, and I really love getting to explore kind of the darker sides of characters. You know, some people say that (laughs) I'm almost getting typecast for, for dark queens (laughs) and stuff, you know, and I'll take it, you know what I mean? Like, um, I think there's something that can be very beautiful and, and, uh, transformative about exploring those sides of characters. Um, and so video games really allow you to dig deep, you know, with a good narrative, um, this really yeah. allows you to dig deep into the human psyche um, and, and play through it in a way. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of versatility earlier, your voice is a bit of a chameleon in that you can not only adjust your tone, but also deliver in multiple accents and dialects. What are some of your favorites and why? Oh, my gosh. Um that is a good question. I mean, British is definitely a favorite because it's a lot easier for me to just slip into it and not really think about <laughs> anything. So yeah. there's that, but so the ease of it, I would say that. But I also, uh, Parisian French is also very nice. It's very soft and sensual and there's, there's, a, there's a feel to it that uh, yeah. when you kind of enter it, it, it changes your psyche. Uh, so yeah, I would say it just it kind of depends on the day. It kind of depends on the character. Um, but I love, you know, especially when I happen to get to play a character that has some sort of, you know, exotic accent or something, where you know I can kind of explore that world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, random question: Can you, by chance, can you do Australian? Okay. Yeah. I I actually let's see. Let me not think about it too hard. I can usually do in Aussie. Aussie's kind of hard because you get a little too nasal and then you start to sound a bit more uh, Kiwi and I'm not <laughs> sure exactly which one I'm doing now. So. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. Great job, Ma. Thank Great you. job. Thank you. <laughs> back for this. Oh, forgive me. My yeah. <laughs> no, I loved it. Um, I'm aware that you used to be a pretty intense, dedicated gamer. What are some characters in other gaming franchises that stand out to you as being iconic and perhaps influenced you in your line of work? Oh my gosh. That's such a good question. I mean, I would say any of these badass women like like Sindel or I was a, I was a big <laughs> Sun Lee girl for a while, you know, that leg pop, 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 pop. Like, right. you know, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. that's a great question. You know, I can't believe I, I 
don't think I've really specifically thought about in the gaming world which characters. You know, I can tell you like movies all day long, like Sarah Connor, and, you know, and oh. Terminator, or Ripley, and Aliens, right? Or Wonder Woman, oh, or, you know, um, Eartha Kitt, Catwoman, right? But I'm trying to think like video games. That's such a good question. Oh, well, you said you're, you're a massive Jennifer Hale fan. Is there any characters that really resonated with you? Oh, my God. Yes, and I'm completely drawing a blank, though. But yeah, well, I mean, Commander Shepard, of course, right? I mean, of course. I mean, and then, but that's just, like, I feel a handful. I feel like, like I said, she just embodies such empowering characters. And she was definitely yeah. a huge influence just in general seeing that women could be portrayed that way. You know what I mean? Because for so yeah. long, I mean, female characters just weren't necessarily that strong and so to really you know have characters that shine and are are leaders and powerful and just have so much life to them i i just feel like jennifer just always did a kick-ass job at that so she was just she and herself was so inspirational yes absolutely uh if i'm not mistaken i think you're actually a, a massive fan of um what's his name there morgan freeman right Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have Morgan Freeman. Come on, right? I'm not a fan of Morgan Freeman. Then, <laughs> okay. then something's wrong, man. <laughs> you know? You know? Right? I mean, come on. What are some of your favorite movies with him? Oh, my God. Um, You know, I... I love just about everything i love him in the batman movies um oh of course he does a phenomenal job like just steals your breath away um of course uh uh shawshank um yep. uh oh what's the one where jim carrey's god or he's god oh bruce almighty bruce almighty he was awesome yeah. in that i mean he's just awesome in everything oh oh, oh what's the one where he's the principal at the school and he plays Principal. Lean on me. Lean on oh, me. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That would get the famous line. They used to call me. They used to call me Mr. Something. Now they call me Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, anytime he's a narrator, you just get chills. Real. Chills. Yeah, yeah. He's just, he's phenomenal. I mean, he was really one of my first inspiration when I was learning about this whole voiceover biz. You know, you think about yeah. the, the mega voices that you all people always talk about right james earl jones morgan freeman so when i first decided to get into voiceover like naturally he was one of my first you know icons it's just like well yeah i want to be a female morgan freeman because everybody knows morgan freeman and he's the bomb you know and he just killed every <laughs> role like that so yeah he was definitely a huge inspiration <laughs> wow um what advice would you give for somebody uh, just in general who is looking to delve into the world of voiceover work? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I would say if you're delving into the world of voiceover or anything for that matter, but definitely voiceover, um, know that this is a tough business. This is acting. This is voice acting. It's not just about having a cool voice or being able to do really cool impersonations at parties. Like there's so much more to this <laughs> career. It is like so rewarding, but you're going to work. Like you're really going to work. And if you want to do this, you're going to have to give your all to really find success in it because it requires so much psychologically, physically, um, emotionally, you know, there's a lot of rejection in this business. You know, I try not to look at it as rejection. I just look at it like it, it's literally apples and oranges. You know what I mean? Like they may prefer a husky voice or a more youthful voice or whatever. You know what I mean? It's not about you personally. It's Absolutely. just about for this role. But a lot of people can see it as personal rejection. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. As an extension of acting, it's like you're bringing we bring as artists so much of ourselves personally to the table and to really give a great performance, you kind of have to bring some vulnerability and that's raw and that, that leaves you out there exposed. You know what I mean? So when somebody says, eh, nah, I'm not going to pick you, it kind of feels like, oh my God, you're actually rejecting me. And so you have to kind of develop a thicker skin and realize, no, it's just a flavor. You know, it's really just somebody wanted, needed a different flavor or maybe everybody loved you, but this just was a more practical choice for whatever reasons. I found the longer I've, you know, been in this business, the more you realize like 
there's a million reasons that have nothing to do with you personally. But the best thing sure. you can do is bring your best, you know, continue to be as vulnerable as you can and know that it's going to take a lot of time. You know, like the success mm. people are seeing with me now in extraordinary games like Mortal Kombat and Sindel. I mean, that took a long time to, to curate, you know what I mean? Um, and so sometimes people see your success and they feel like, oh, it's overnight, but you have to really grind at this and just be patient and know that if you really give your all, you know, the sky's the limit, but it's probably not going to happen overnight. So <laughs> that's have sure. a savings plan. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Nice one. Wow. Well, that that is absolutely wonderful advice. Thank you so much for saying that. Oh, of course. Of course. Happy to. Yeah. So we're now going to jump to the final segment of the show, and Ooh. it is called Final Round. So what we're going to do here is just ask you some rapid fire questions. Oh, try God. to get to know you a little more. I suck um, at now, rapid fire. Okay. Okay. Bear okay with you me. know, I suck at rapid fire. You, no, you know what? You know what? Okay. D don't worry about it. No <laughs> rush. You can think about it. It's, it's not the end of the world. We're cool. We're cool. Can I, can I Google <laughs> and read me? Can I phone a friend? Okay. Yeah. Can, can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> so first question, what is your favorite food? Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> even that, man, even that's changing, but I will say, I'll go with my old standby, potatoes. Potatoes? Yeah, I right? mean, how can you go wrong? I mean, they, they, there's these things called French fries. I don't know if you've really? heard of them. Hello, but, oh, hash brown, man. mash, scallop. I'm like Bubba Gump when it comes to potatoes. I'm like, fried potatoes, boiled potatoes, <laughs> all the potatoes. <laughs> Good. Awesome. If you could have any superpower, mm. what would it be? I think invisibility. Invisibility. Oh, Is nice. That what would you like to do when you're invisible? That, spy? Uh... spy on people. <laughs> just spy on some peeps. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's like, it sounds so messy, right? But I'm telling you, I just think there's just something fascinating <laughs> about number one, getting to go through the world uninterrupted and, and have That's you, true. me time, you know, where nobody can bother you and you can go do your thing. And also- Steal a few things. Yeah, but also, you know, <laughs> people show a different side of themselves sometimes when they think nobody's hanging out. So, you know, sometimes it's just good to get the skinny. That's all I'm saying, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a sketchy desire, but guilty. <laughs> what are some of your best impressions and a few examples? Oh, let's see. Mm. Oh God! Uh, I just did one, but I don't think I can say this one from NDA. Um, let's okay. See. <laughs> okay. I know. Like, I'm trying to think. Um. Oh, that's so good. Damn it. Yeah. Are the ones you've done most of your life that people just automatically know you for? And that's crazy. I do a lot of sound like stuff, but like this is when my mind goes blank. Rapid fire. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hold on, it's coming. It's okay. She had a little theme song here. A little, I know. little background music. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Amazing. We have Amazing. to come back to that. We have to come back to that. Okay, okay we'll come back to it. We'll I'm come sorry. back to it. I'm if sorry. You, Shape, if shift, it comes shift. up, just interrupt me, let me know. Okay. Um, okay. If if you could drop if you could travel back in time, what era would you go to and why? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it probably wouldn't be that far. Like, okay. I, I've always thought like, I don't know. I always felt kind of hippified and like, ah. I'm thinking like 50s, 60s, you know, maybe. just. Hey. Kinda, I don't know. There was just something about like. But I'd say maybe between 60s, early 70s, like when it just felt like, I don't know, the colors were brighter and people yeah. were more creative. And I don't know, there was just sort of a, I mean, obviously politically and stuff, there was plenty of crazy going on just like we have now, but there's always, you know, crazy stuff in history. So yeah, I don't know. I'd say maybe, yeah, I'd be a hippie. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think that's a good answer. That's right? a good answer. Yeah. I like it. We just need a little more love in this world. I mean, flower oh, power. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I'm a 90s kid, and, and even back then, I like I love the 90s. And I've got a freakishly good memory, yeah. and it feels like it was just yesterday to me. I miss it. Isn't it weird to, like, turn on classic rock stations now, and it's all 90s? And I'm like, what? <laughs> talking about <laughs> yeah 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 uh what are some of your secret talents oh um i can whistle and hum at the same time kind of what Let me see example if I can let's see <laughs> lips aren't wide enough let's hold them <laughs> all right all right and i have lipstick so bear with me it's sticky okay <clears throat> You hear the humming? Is it coming that through? That is different. <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay. Oh my you hear that, god. Hear that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I just remember Look that I that. could hear that. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Do you have any other secret talents? That's really cool. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, I can... I mean, it's hard to prove it, um, but I can like, yeah. I have a really, I have a really good ear. Um, ah. So I can hear a song and pretty much get the exact like rhythm and lyrics down after just a few listens. Or I will be able to like, you could play a song that I haven't heard in maybe eight years, but I'll know usually if it's out of key from the original key yeah um, so i have a i have a pretty finicky fine-tuned ear um so that's i think really that good. helps with some of the voices and stuff and sure when you think of other like i have I got some i know i got some cool talents um oh i got a question for you yeah Can, uh do you sing at all i do sing yeah i do wow. sing um i'm trying to think if i have any characters that uh mm. i did i just did a movie um called fireheart where i play a 1920s singer um, but they actually use a oh. singer in the singing bit. And I don't blame them at all, okay? Like, it's, I'm not a professional. But I, you know, I do enough to get by. But yeah, I do sing. I'm trying to think if there's any other characters um, where I, you can actually hear me singing. Mm. Uh, did you ever have like a, a rock band or anything in your early no. days? Anything? No, I didn't. Nope. I mean, I was married to a musician who, you know, he was like a guitar, you know, solo guitar uh. Uh, vocalist. Um, and, you know, he played in bars all the time. And so definitely got familiar with live performance and things like that. And I got, a, you know, did a few karaoke's on the mic, you know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. That, that's about the extent of my professionalism with it. But I think there's a few things, if I recall correctly, Within the next year, that'll be coming up where you'll get to hear me sing. So Ooh, like, okay. Yeah. Looking Maybe forward to that. that. I, I, I think it's going to yeah. be earlier than that. Yeah. So. Fantastic. If they um, don't replace me. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who would you trade places with for a day? Oh. I think Steve Harvey or Ryan. Ah. Yeah, because I feel like they get it all done. Or even Kelly Ripa. Like, I just huh? feel like they get it all done. Like, they, they're, like, model gorgeous. And they own, like, three production companies in their name. And then yeah. they, you know, work out every morning and have dinner with their wives. And, and you know what I mean? And they just got, and they got, like, 50 shows going on and do, like, you know, game shows. And, and I'm like, how? I got to figure out how the hell you do it. Because I'm convinced they've got a clone. <laughs> They've got twins. There's something going on, like body snatchers. There's something happening. Yeah, I wonder the same thing. But you know, yeah. at the end of the day, um, gotta gotta hand it to Steve Harvey though. I think he is one of the funniest guys on television. That guy Absolutely. cracks me up. He's a star, and it's effortless. I know exactly. And that's I would want to study him for something like that too. Just like how how do you freaking make your day so magical? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> from the outside it looks amazing. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, your guilty pleasure. Oh. <laughs> the, yeah. the Bee Gees. Um, oh. That's even nice. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes. My people. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. I'm in good company. Love here. Beaches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's definitely guilty one. pleasure. <laughs> Why <Why's> the one? <laughs> yeah. That's the only one. Um, um, oh, there was another one. Oh God. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We'll stick with BGs for now. Sorry, guys. Or, you know, <laughs> you're amazing. <laughs> Um, did you come up with anything for, uh, the impressions yet? Oh, anything? Uh, okay. Um, I, let me see. <laughs> I did. I actually did. <laughs> oh no. Don't you okay, hate we'll that have when to... it's like something comes to the top of your brain and then somebody asks you and then you go, and I lost it again. Hold on. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yep, um, yep. all right. I actually do. You remember Desperate Housewives? Yes. Okay. I as, I actually used to do a pretty kick-ass Mary Alice. Okay, let's see. Meet Susan. Susan is having a bad day. <laughs> she lost her car keys and the rest of her clothing, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god! We're gonna edit that out. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was so. It was so good. Okay, thank you, thank you. I still got it. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Okay, wow. this is the key for, Yeah, that was my idea. <laughs> um, and last question. Yes. A a funny memory that you'll never forget. Hmm. <laughs> this one right <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so funny memory that I'll never forget oh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well I, I mean this is this is uh, it's not like hysterical but I thought it was kind of funny <laughs> so yeah I moved to uh my hubby and I moved to Los Angeles about I think it's been almost six years now, um, okay. maybe five and a half years ago. And the reason we moved to Los Angeles is because I initially thought I was auditioning um, for this video game and come to find out it was an animated TV show. Come to find out it was Arcane. So like, I had no idea at the time because I, I don't think I read the specs because I was in a rush that day. It's like, I looked oh. at the audition, I'm like, oh, this character looks cool, blah, 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 blah. And it happened to be Jules in Arcane. She's the character in one of the opening scenes who like puts the knife down and she's badass, uh, episode one. But so yeah, and that's what kind of set things into motion that brought us to <laughs> Los Angeles and like set my career even like, more full speed ahead. So that was kind of funny considering I thought I was going to be just sitting in my jammies recording another video game. Right. Actually, no, <laughs> you're moving to LA. <laughs> you moved it. Wow. Uh, did, were you ever involved in any funny pranks or anything like this? Oh, I mean, I am a bit of a prankster, but God. Ooh, what are some good ones you've done? Hmm. <laughs> I have to start farting on everyone. It's not everyone. It's just, it's just people close to me. Um, oh, that's too good. Yeah, I did. I did used to. I, I gave my brothers hell when it came to farting. Like I would. Oh, you yeah. Know, yeah, I would. I would like, you know, I put it in a jar and then, you know, <laughs> like, be like, this is so okay to you, you know, or like, you know, we'd be at a store together and like, you know, we're in Walmart or whatever. And then, so I rip one and then obviously everybody's going to think he did it. And then, so I just <laughs> act appalled. <laughs> How could you, you know what I mean? So I was yeah. really at that. Or I would like fart in the seat cushion, you know, and let it build up a little oh, bit and then get yeah. up. And leave it. Yeah. And you just leave it ready to go. Yes. Yes. And then you sit and <laughs> just time release. Um, ah, so I'm you like to give him right now? This is a confessional. Please absolve me. Because <laughs> uh... <clears throat> okay, so Mara likes to give Scooby snacks. <laughs> do you do Dutch ovens as well, or <laughs> I do feel that's kind of crossing the line, but I may have been guilty of one or two. <laughs> 
Okay, well, Mara, this has been uh, literally one of the best podcasts of all time. Uh, I will remember this till the day I die. <laughs> this is accomplished. This- Yes, this has been so great. And Kamidogu appreciates you taking the time to connect with us today. Aww. Before we leave, is there any particular project that you'd like to promote at this time? And where can our audiences find you on social media? Oh, that is so awesome. Let's see. Um, you, One of the latest things you can hear me in is uh, the new Green Lantern, Beware My Power. You can catch ah. me as uh, Lisa Drac and Banth Dar and uh, maybe a cop or two. Just saying. Ah. Um, uh, and what, oh, we have some other things. Let me see. Something else. Something else. Yep. You know what? I'm probably talking about it on social media. So I would give you that. It's easy to find me. I'm pretty much everywhere um, except not really on Facebook. But uh, you can pretty much catch me <laughs> on Instagram, Twitter, and occasionally TikTok at Mara Juno. M-A-R-A-J-U-N-O-T. Don't forget that silent French tea. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so excited to see where your career is going to take you next. And uh, yeah, this has been uh, an absolute blast. So oh, you take care, Mom. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day and love you guys. Okay, friends, we've come to the closing point of this episode. We appreciate every single one of you that continues to share our content across the net. It does not go unnoticed. Hope you really enjoyed this episode, and maybe we'll have even more people from the voice acting business on our show. Express the interest, and please leave your thoughts in the comments regarding today's feature. We'd be elated to hear what you have to say. In the meantime, you know how it goes. Have fun, stay safe, and stay flawless.